and welcome back to Project Independence and You Community Talk Radio and 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller along with Otto Lose and Christina Liu, of course, our supervisor Jennifer DeSena and Dan Cox. Um, we just a bit au revoir to our Paula Yule who popped in for a little bit. And now we are in um, our Talk of the Town segment. Um, again, really to celebrate and commemorate our 12 years on the radio. Um, I know, Christina, you, you supplied some gifts to everybody, as you do um, every year. I didn't open mine yet, but I did decorate accordingly. I, I like the, yeah. Because, you know, decorations and celebrations is, is Christina. Well, there's something in there that might be beneficial because it's something we do often on this show, so it might... Uh help us out. Otto, I see, has his in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's go ahead and see I what it is. I actually opened mine already, and I ate yes. a couple of the muffins that you put in there. So. Oh, wait. That's all right. We <laughs> need you to say it's filled up, Otto. That's fine. Yeah. And what? there's a brownie in there, too. That's it was, the and that's, that's an homage to Dan, because Dan would be very upset if the cosmic brownie was not in each of our uh, gift bags. So... <laughs> Uh, I have to always put that in for Dan. but And of course, we uh... have the <laughs> scroll of a lovely note. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll open that later because now yes, I'm all fixated on the brownies and muffins. Um, <laughs> brownie and muffins. But let's, I know that, you know, during our anniversary shows, we always talk about our favorite moments, our favorite shows. Um, you know, I know last, last week, we kind of talked a little bit off the air with Dan and just kind of the longevity of the show, you know, through a college radio station, a senior talk show about senior issues and aging in place and, and how it started and, and its evolution. And, and of course it started from a recommendation from a town resident at a project independence advisory meeting. And, you know, here we are, it was, here we are, you know, 12 years later, um, never went off the air during during COVID and just switched to Zoom and and everything's archived. And Christina, you always you're so great with stats and I love stats. I don't love figuring out stats. I just like to see them. And, you know, um, this would be would this be our five hundred and thirty eighth new show? Be. Yep. Yeah, new show. So obviously, you know, we air every week, but sometimes there's repeated shows depending on holidays or, you know, weather or whatever it might be. Um, but when I was going through, there was, you know, so this is the 538th, you know, new content show, um, which is just incredible. We've had over 1,151 different guests on the program, which is just um, incredible, you know, and I forget sometimes because we do this every week. So you're kind of just in the flow of things, but to really see everything and all the guests and, and, you know, partners and the community based organizations that, you know, we have who have been on the show every year and, and just sharing all the great stuff they're doing is, is really, uh, is really wonderful. How did you feel your first show? I mean, Me? what, oh when you God. were kind of like having to pull together race, you have had no prior experience in radio. I'm going to I, assume. I did not. Um, yeah, I was a nervous wreck. I was, first of all, I mean, that's 12 years ago. So I was, you know, new into my kind of career of project independence and Evelyn Roth, you know, give us a little who, background uh, on that, you know, because Christina, you were an intern here. Yeah. I started as hired. a social work intern. Um, I always wanted to work with seniors. And when I was in, you know, in, I was at Adelphi getting my master's and I, you know, it wasn't, you know, there's a lot of programs with kids and with substance abuse. And there was real, I, there was not one class that just focused on seniors, but I knew in my heart that that's what I wanted to do. And I was very close with my grandparents. You know, we've talked about this so many times on the show. So that really fueled what I wanted to do. So finding a placement to work with seniors, you know, wasn't the easiest thing um, in, in the world. But I remember getting the call saying, there's a new, you know, town of North Hempstead is launching Project Independence and, you know, it's just starting out and it's grassroots. It was, it was all these buzzwords that I loved, you know, and I remember Paul and I, you know, we talked on the phone and then I went and I did my internship there and then I haven't left. <laughs> I'm still here, you know, so there, there wasn't any kind of. We are uh, thankful break. for that. Believe me, we are thankful you have not left. So it's just, um, but it's really amazing, you know, and supervisor, I know you can. Uh, you 
have a lot of done a lot of great work with human service organizations in the community, um, you know, and especially in the substance abuse realm of, of things. And it's just um, to have that, you know, and I think, you know, Otto, what you were saying, what makes this program so special is, you know, not a lot of townships have, you know, this human service component, you know, under it, you know, of people who are, you know, social workers and nurses and, and people who, you know, worked with social workers and nurses, you know, for a bazillion years, you know, and it's, and I think that that's exactly what shines through and, and makes the program such um, a success. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I saw a comment uh, a couple of weeks ago, which I wrote down, seniors feel invisible. Mm -hmm. And what Project Independence does, if you think about it, what you talked about, there weren't that many programs that were geared that way. There were a lot for the other areas. I think Project Independence removes a lot of that invisibility, if you will. Uh, you know, it, it brings the seniors out to different things. They All these different things they can do, they can get together, they're recognized as people. Uh, you know, they don't have that uh, and I believe it's true in a lot of cases. Seniors do feel invisible. Uh, you know, they're maybe for a lot of reasons, but it's true, I think, you know. No, I don't, um, you know, you brought up something that when I was an intern, speaking of that, that always stuck with me, you know, because it was just, you know, the NORC at that time. And we were in this expansion process. And I remember sitting there and, you know, feverishly taking, you know, notes in, in the meeting and, um, one of the members had said that she felt so isolated in her community. You know, her kids no, you know, were grown, so they didn't live there. So she lived on this block. You know, there was new families moving in and she felt, you know, invisible and isolated. And, you know, then Project Independence came along. And she met people who, you know, lived in her area, who even lived on her block. You know, and I remember at that time sitting there and being so impressed that she said, now I feel a part of my community oh. again. You know, and I think that that's what North Hempstead, what it's all about. You know, there's, I, I, that's my, I've been saying this for years, you know, there's programs for, you know, children and, and teens and seniors and animals. I mean, look at all the wonderful work North Hempstead does, you know, with the animal shelter. And, you know, we had mentioned Halloween. So it's just, I think that that's anyone who lives in the town is really blessed to really have all these resources and and you know us being in the realm of seniors auto and hearing what you're saying i think is is so true because it makes you feel a part of something again you know that you might not have you know had it since did your that kids for were me school. frankly i mean I, yeah. I lived in manhasset for 25 years when the kids were all growing up we knew a lot of people because they were in school and you know all of the above so we downsized uh you know, size of house and whatnot, and moved to New Hyde Park. And when we first moved there, we really, really didn't know much. I mean, we weren't that far from Manhattan, but we really weren't connected to the community at all. You know, we had right. no kids in school. We didn't know anything. You and, know, Otto, when it, you were talking about, you know, invisibility, I, I you know, it's something that I've always thought. Um, it, it's, it's invisibility. It, it's, uh, to me... It's a dismissiveness that there is in society to seniors where they kind of don't, not that they're invisible, but they don't matter as much. And, and, I, and like, there's like this simple scenario, there, two things. So you've got, you know, the early bird special, like get them in and out, you know, and, and it's, it's like unflattering, but you know, seniors really are this, I mean, this generation of, of, of the older population, could be the last generation for quite a while that that has some money to spend that likes to travel that likes entertainment but for some reason you know we talk about this a lot there is this dismissiveness of getting older in our culture and it's not in every culture but for some reason but the fact of the matter is is that the population is older so the majority i believe the majority of the population in the next 10 years, even probably now, will be, I think, 50 and older. Um, so that's a voice. We have to, in a way, the voice has to come from us older gener us older people. And, you know, hey, we're the ones consuming, you know, we're the ones getting older. And the fact is people are living a lot longer. And that's something that none of us are really prepared for you know, to have so many people in that 90 and over age bracket. 
Um, so that's another really good thing about Project Independence because we're staying with it. We're watching it happen. I mean, I'm sure, Christine, I know you have stats on it, so I don't mean to put you on the spot, but do you know, because you used to know like the ages of like how many, how many um, members we have that are, you know, 60 to 70, 70 to 80. Yeah, I don't I, have I'm the sure. newest breakdown, but what I do think is so impressive is these surveys that come in for project independence and the the age you know i remember because i've been reviewing them forever with paul you know because we review them we assign them to social workers or nurses and you know you see now people on both sides of the spectrum which i think is very interesting and very telling and shows how project independence has grown you know because we have people are most of them come in it's the high 80s you know early 90s and then i've been seeing a lot on the you know younger end of things oh, you know really? so i've been saying like yeah it's very interesting you know 63 64 is it the younger end of things or is it just that you're getting older that they seem younger <laughs> you know one of the things I d i've done with grandchildren over the years is uh let's say they're 19 years old and you know all of a sudden they know everything all right they're geniuses mm -hmm. and uh you're lucky so you're say, plus. so i tell them i said look did you know i was 19 at one time and i was in the navy and I did learn a few things, all right? I said, now, I said, do you think I've learned anything between the age when I was 19 and the fact that I'm now 87? Uh, you think I'd learned Is anything? That possible? During that period a little? Of time, you know? And, uh, and they look at me and they say, yeah. I said, there's a lot of things I don't know that you know, but I know a lot of things you don't know, you know? And, uh, you know, a lot of it comes down to, okay, do I know the current music? really not very well uh do i like some of it nah, you know <laughs> uh, you know but so that's something i don't know all right so now that's your department um uh, and i admit that i'll say look i don't know you know point being i'm trying to point out that just because you get older doesn't mean you're always getting dumber you know you 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 do learn things along the way uh even even if you just by osmosis, I mean, something's going to rub off, you know, and I think sometimes younger people tend to think that, uh, oh, he's old and now he's stupid. He can't do this. Yeah, can't do that, I, I, I know? know. It's that dismissiveness kind of you're there. Like, yeah, you know, I think they I think if you remind them a little bit. Yeah. Like yeah. I, like, I, uh, right. Yeah. You know, do you think I'd learned anything from th that age? I mean, is there anything possible that you could know that they don't? Right. Yeah, I think we're recognizing that our seniors have so much to give, yes. that they are a resource, they have knowledge, they have experience. And yes, it might be different experience than what our, you know, younger generations are, are doing, but they have so much to give. And by giving them this vehicle to get together, they are still giving and still contributing to our town. And that is adding to the quality of life of our town by what they're giving and also by what they're receiving from each other. So we are creating a better quality of life in the town of North Hempstead through all these programs, all these networks that we offer. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You know, in my former life um, before coming to the town, I was in healthcare administration, had a lot of jobs in hospitals and um, not for profits. And, and I remember this one time and, and I know I've talked about it before that just, you know, seniors, it's like that whole vibe of being dismissed, which I think is really changing definitely in North Hempstead, because we do engage in so many ways and we listen to our residents. We listen to what their needs are. And that's why when we first started Project Independence, we had advisory boards in different parts of the town. Now, of course, because of COVID, we kind of went to one just to make it. And now it seems to be working. We'll probably expand back again eventually. Um, different parts of the town are very different. You have like Great Neck. There's a lot of apartments, you know, in, in Great Neck, you know, um, and it's very different from living in Roslyn where you have houses and you're not, you don't have easy access to as much transportation maybe. So every area in the town is, is very different. Um, 
my, my, I, I kind of went off on a tangent, but I'm just saying when I was in healthcare, I remember I was an operations <laughs> manager for a very, very busy multi-specialty um, offsite residency practice for um, at Plainview North, North Shore at the time. It was super busy and we would have, you know, seniors come in and they'd see the doctor and the doctor would say, you know, um, um, you know, you have to go to the cardiologist, you have to change your medicine, you need a podiatrist, you needed this, they leave with all these scripts. And anyway, I'll, I'll have to get back to that, because I know that we I'm just saying that in the town of North Hempstead, we pay attention and we listen. Um, I want to thank you so much, Supervisor, for joining us today. Um, My pleasure. It's, it's great to have you on our anniversary show and, you know, just acknowledge Project Independence and the services and the services townwide too, because um, you know we're all connected. Yes. So um, we actually have to take a quick break. You're listening to Project Independence and You Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be back with Talk of the Town. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS App Store on Apple devices or the Google Play Store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. And welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller, of course, along with Otto Lowe's and Christina Liu, our radio show producer. We're celebrating 12 years of Project Independence and You um, Community Talk Radio. It's unbelievable. And we couldn't celebrate this show without talking to Dan, Dan Cox. So, um, Dan, are you ready to join us on air? Um, I'm here. I'm here, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, and there's the man behind the curtain. <laughs> and there he is. There he is. Um, you know, last week we kind of just talked a little bit, I think, off the air, um, maybe a little bit on the air, just about how it all started, you know, how it all started. And not just how it all started, but the, can you believe 12 years later, it's still well, going on on this college radio station? Well, when the show started, I wasn't the senior citizen. Now I am. <laughs> and I, and I, and I broke think, you. I, you broke me. No, no. I think there was an expectation that this was a show that could go on forever as long as there were quality people, uh, you know, um, producing it. And, you know, we were going to make her cry because oh, you know, gosh, here we go. Earlier, earlier in the program, you asked her about her first show and she was very nervous and she didn't know what she was doing. Now, I, I have a professional career in television and in radio, and I don't think I've seen anyone take to producing a show faster than she did. I work with some producers in television who couldn't hold a candle to what she does every week. So oh, she's highly organized, which is really important for a producer. She understands the content. She sends out the packets, and we're all informed. Even me, I get I get a packet, so I know where we're headed. Um no, she just uh, the, the 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 show would not have lasted twelve years uh, without Christina. So, you know that's exactly just the way true. it is. Yeah, triple no, A. Thank you, jeez, I, guys, I, I really was doing okay because you know, I would, like good, I said many times, if I were back in the corporate world, I would have stolen Christina. Oh, I, listen, go. if I <laughs> if I move on to something else, I'm stealing or taking her with me. She's great. Um, <laughs> like calm down there, you two. About. You're not yeah. stealing her. Trust me. <laughs> No, the, uh, you know, no. The, show, the show started out kind of silly because originally the idea when, when um, I think it was your predecessor, Christina and, and, and Jerry had come to me and said, we want to build a radio station in North Hampstead. And after I calmed down and stopped laughing, you know, and they were embarrassed, I said, no, nah, that's not really what you want to do. I said, you know, a couple hours a week is enough work for anybody. And I, I think Christina can and bless your heart that. for that one. Dan. <laughs> yeah, it's enough work for anybody. But my 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 involvement in the show was was, you know, kind of minimal in the beginning. I mean, I just I needed shows. Twelve years ago, the radio station had disconnected itself from a network and needed to bring on some local programming. 
And the first thing I, you know, I was happy when Jerry came to see me because it's, I said, well, this is, this is what we do. This is what we do. We, we add this show and we, we see how it goes and you're the only show. Well, no, you're one of two shows that have lasted the entire time. There's another Dan, show. Dan, thank you for seeing that, for having the foresight, yeah. because, you know, it could have been another radio station at a college maybe would have said, you know, I don't really know that we could get the listeners for a senior I, I, talk. Radio. But how did Jerry wind up going to you? How did he know to go to you? I, I, I don't know. I think whoever he was So there was like a, just a bunch of research. Time, did yeah. a little research and said, let's yeah. talk to a local radio station, see if we can build a radio station. You know, and I guess we got lucky <laughs> more than anything else. But at the time, I was struggling with new, with creating new programming for a station that was going to go from rebroadcasting uh, part of a network for 18 hours a day to all of a sudden having a program all 24. And this this was a good fit. Now, if you remember early on, there was a whole bunch of talk programs from, yeah. from 10 to 12 yeah. in the morning. There were there were actually nine programs. There were eight other programs. Each only had an hour each. And then you guys were the anchor on Friday with two hours. And if Christina remembers in those days, there were 15 minute segments. And you did the silly thing of trying to have a guest for each segment, which was. We had uh, four. Yeah, four yeah. Being... yeah, four yeah. 15 It was like one of those cartoons. Segments. It was yeah. like people yeah, it just was, in and it out. Was, yeah. It was more like a, a late night talk show than it was uh, because right. you only got so much time and then you move the person out. Um, but yeah, and, and then I wanted to change the timing of it because I thought four segments was uh, too much. And then the pandemic hit and it said like, you know, you know, we did a lot of those four segments and then, uh, you know, for a long time, which is yeah. crazy. And we were all meeting at the station. None of it was done pre-recorded. None of it was done online. Then the pandemic hit and we realized, you know, let's go to the three segments. Let's talk to one person in depth, really do a solid deep dive with our guests, which I think is really, really, I think that improved the show a lot. Mm, and then, of course, crazy. the addition and Zoom because of this technology now. We've opened up another audience on television, which is which is great. But uh, you know, pr prior to Zoom uh, and the COVID thing, I was like once every month or whatever, and that led me to being involved every week, uh, yeah. which I'm grateful for. Frankly, looking back on it, uh, well, I, me I don't too. even think me we too, asked yeah. Otto. I think yeah, I think he just ended up. We were like, sorry, you're just locked in every week. So here you go. <laughs> Actually, me too. For for and 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 that's no reflection on the alternate co-host right. we had for all those years there were some very good ones um i'll just say that there were some very good ones uh <laughs> but i like stability and consistency you know when it comes to people like that you know people are more adapt to that so if they hear the same voices every week they tend to be you know more comfortable than to kind of switch things up a lot so i think the new this format and again nothing against the people who were who were co-hosting in, the, in those days um you know, I think this is a really nice mix. I think, I think again, the pandemic, and we're all going to cry. Uh, we became very close during the pandemic because, with you know, we weren't physically in the same room, but we could talk every week. You know, I don't think people on the air realize, people listening or watching realize that when we went off the air, we'd spend a half an hour just kind of, you know, it was like therapy. Yeah, yeah, in, <laughs> you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a group therapy session. Uh, just talking about how things were going, and 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 again, I I, I need to um, acknowledge some people, yeah. Because right. during the pandemic, I had to take over engineering and doing all the technology for this. But before that, you guys worked with students. Mm -hmm. Students would engineer your shows, and some of those students really took to you guys. I know you're going to a wedding of one of those former students on Friday. Yeah, yeah the day I, this I mean, airs. Are you guys going? I'm yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Are you? And I think that's great because that was the whole point at that time. Um, I think there is a, a, I see it in my own kids. My kids are all grown, but I saw it in my own kids. It doesn't, because uh, my, my, my kids didn't grow up with grandparents. My, my parents, my wife's parents died fairly. I'm, I'm one of many children. So they were quite old by the time we had kids. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have that connection and if you talk to my kids and they're wonderful and they they respect older people but they never grew up with that so they don't have that that feeling and one of the things i liked about the intergenerational idea of having 20 18 19 20 year olds engineer the show was they got a new perspective on 
what it's like to be 60, 70, 80 years old. I think that's really important. And I think that's one of the reasons why we went from senior talk radio to community talk radio. Because Man, I'm getting chills, literally. Christina and I had a conversation right. a while ago about how this show is not about just senior citizens. It's about, because of the subject matter, me, when my parents were coming towards the end, I got a lot from this show and prepared me for that. You know, a lot of young people are not prepared. And even, even our guest earlier, Jen, mentioned she hasn't done the circle of with her with her with her parents yet and she now understands that that, that's just that's an important thing and i'm starting to do it with my kids they know where everything is they know where the passwords are they know where all the the information is you know and all that kind of stuff and that that you build that i think you build that over time but it's it's a smart thing to do so to me part of this show is this whole idea that we're not just presenting a bunch of subjects about uh, you know senior citizens or elderly people you know, with infirmities and this no we're, we're broad we're wide we're teaching the financial shows were always pretty good too because i i learned a lot about when my again when my parents came to the end my sister would call me because she was taking care of them and she'd say what do i do about the finances and i would send her copies of the show and she would listen to the financial people um every time otto comes up with his uh his his little golden nuggets about how he goes to the doctor with a list of questions i do that now I didn't do that before I heard Otto say that, but I do that now. And I, I, and I, and my wife is doing it now because we're getting to a point, unfortunately in our lives where little things are starting to, you know, it's like an old car. We're starting to get a little tweak here and there and it's gotta be, <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be maintained or it's gotta be fixed or it's gotta be adjusted. And it's nice. All these little, as Christina called them, golden nuggets, really, really important. And I think, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we don't know how many people are affected by us, but, you know as well as I do. You get a three one one call, or somebody sees you uh, in, in, in at, at at Tully Park or wherever at uh, mm -hmm. Martin Park, and and they say, "I saw you on TV. Mm -hmm. You're at that. You're on that show." That's just you know that just tells you that no matter how many people we don't think we're helping, we're helping a whole lot more. Yeah. And they and, and they want to make sure that it's going to be on. Yeah. 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 And I, I try my best to get it so it's timely enough. I mean we. Mm -hmm. You know, you do your talk of the town segment. And sometimes those, those, uh, that's why we put the date on each show because we want people to know. Sorry, <laughs> you know, we're, we're giving you information that might be a little old, but, but this show, um, is important. Was important to me, and even if it, even if people thought it wasn't good, I was not going to take it off the air because I thought it was good. You know, you know, like a good artist, he paints for himself. For me, I painted for myself with this show. This show turned out to be a, a good radio show. And we can go back to uh, Evelyn, who I who I, I love dearly, um, the first host of the show, um, who I think she kind of solidified my belief in in why the show is important, yeah. because she was so good at talking to people mm -hmm. and so good at letting us know when she didn't want to talk to people or she <laughs> or she didn't like a guest that, that was booked or she had odds. You know, she'd never held back and that kind of thing. And then, of course, John who in the beginning, I didn't think John was going to, I'm being honest. And I, I, I didn't mm -hmm. think John was going to, was going to take to it. But boy, did he take to it? What a mm -hmm. comfortable interview. And I, I will never, I still think of everything when he heard something he really liked and he was so genuine, he'd say, that's tremendous. That's <laughs> tremendous. He'd say that. And you knew hearing it and seeing it that he really believed really it. felt it. He felt it. <laughs> he felt it. He felt whatever you were saying. And he made guests feel so comfortable. So comfortable. Like they were the only person in the world. And 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 that was John. Well, actually that that was John with everybody. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, that was his John, personality. Absolutely. John you know, made we, you feel like you were the most important person in the world whenever well, you what we lived through with John during COVID, first of all wrapped around COVID, but it also wrapped around John being so open about his own situation his yeah and you you felt for him and you yep. you live through his stuff with him yeah. you know it was so brutal he was so genuine so yeah. genuine, so original and, and just such a, the nicest human being i mean you know it just couldn't find a um i can't talk about the current host because i only talk about hosts that don't host anymore <laughs> you can <laughs> talk about the current as i was told last week the acorn didn't fall too far from the tree, so we're we're pretty good. Because right. those who don't know, uh, one thing Rebecca I, I wanted, 
I wanted to add about John, just because, you know, you brought it up was, you know, on his roughest day, if he could do this show, he would. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, when he would call me, he would call me and, and so apologetically, you know, Rebecca, I'm just not feeling, I'm so sorry to bother you, but would you mind? I'm like, I loved hosting the show. It was just bittersweet that it, it always right. meant that, you know, maybe he wasn't feeling good, but he would do the show. He loved doing this show so much. It gave him such joy. Um, he loved learning about Project Independence too. I, I mean, I, he was always like, I loved how he's like, you do that too. I mean, he really um, had this almost youthful openness about yeah. life. And if, like I said, he would be here if he could, he would, he would. And so I think that's such an important trait to understand about him and and life in general if well, you like enjoy I said, john john almost looked like a little kid yeah he'd be like right? he'd watch somebody talk and he'd go wow that's tremendous right and i always remember him saying that or or or, or if it was it was if it was something like you had the matchmaker on or the woman who helps seniors when he'd get embarrassed um, date, <laughs> he got embarrassed it was the best thing in the world because then he'd kind of go Okay, you know, you know, I, I I believe also John had a very broad experience because of his his business world, mm -hmm. where he dealt with a lot of older people, people who were widows, uh, yeah. and handling things, and he saw things that people didn't do that they should do, uh, and problems that are generated as a result. You know, he 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 had an insight on that angle yeah. that none of us really have. You know, you, you witness it, but he mm -hmm. lived it, you know. John had an abundance of something we're missing in this world right now, and that's empathy. He would he would understand the person he's talking to. Mm -hmm. He'd try to feel for them, and, and you know he did. And that's why I yeah. think everybody was always comfortable talking to John. But Even John, when John and, John and I talked off air about politics, because John was involved in North Hempstead, and I was involved here in Glen Cove. And even at his, even at his most annoyed moments, he, he'd go... Ah, but that's just the way it is, you know, and 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 he yeah. just move on, you know. It that never bothered him. It never, and, and to and when he was ill, and we go to break, you'd see it in his face. But boy, when you know when he had to be on, he was on, and he was right there with us. So, yeah, I mean, to, you know, I'm gonna get all worked up here, but uh, I know, but I know, think it, that it, that's part you... of the show. That's part of the beauty of this yeah. show is that is. even with the different hosts, even with the different characters, even with Otto. You know, we still, uh, <laughs> we, I think we reflect a positive, very positive, empathetic and helpful uh, nature. That's what this show is about. It's not about guerrilla journalism. It's about happy news. It's about helping people. And I think that's the bottom line for me is that, you know, in my life, I can go say I, I did at least, I, were, I was involved in at least five or 600 shows that helped people. And I think that's that's the key. Just like just like your organization, Project Independence, you're just there to help people. And the more people you help, you know, the better you feel. And I think, you Dan, you good. like literally are taking all the words out of my mouth because I do feel that way. And I feel the common theme about the show, all the hosts and the co-hosts, you know, that are a part of this program, you know, throughout the years. Nobody, you know, had experience. Nobody came here, you know, you know, besides you, Dan, obviously. But, you know, the common theme was that it was wanting to learn from people wanting to listen to people and just wanting to help you know and i think that you know john especially really you know and i love that about him because that that's something that i loved is like finding the backstories of people and how they got involved into where they were going and that was the best part of mm -hmm. the interviews and something that we continued you know throughout the years so i think that that is what was so special and and i think too you know because that's why i wrote in my notes i wrote i wrote you know like this is sunshine news right mm -hmm. of course we talk about hard topics and it's it's important to talk about certain things that aren't you know always you know fun games but we do it you know in the next breath you better believe we're laughing you know that's why i gifted us all yeah. tissue boxes because sometimes we're laughing and crying and sometimes mm -hmm. we're crying crying right so there's you know it's we're, we're we're and i think that that is important and especially in society and that's really what i was reflecting on as i prepared for this is is you know that all you hear is so much terrible things in the news and it's stressful and it's heavy and it's just everything just feels heavy and 
I think this show is, you know, where we might have to talk about deep conversations, you know, we really embrace the positive, the good, you know, and, and how to make your life better. And that's something that certainly came out of, you know, COVID for us, as, as we mentioned, you know, because it was really, all right, we're dealing with a really bad situation, but like, how do we, you know, make it better? So I think that that's, you know, really my favorite part of this show is that, well, you know, we are able to hold find, on. you know. Before you say everything. something, Otto, I've got to do something, something yeah. I'm only going to do once and I'm never going to do it again. You're listening to Project Independence and You on Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org, and we will be right back. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. And welcome back to Project Independence in You Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I am Dan Cox. No, actually, I'm not. I'm just kidding. He just Dan sent has, us. He, 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 Dan, he put us on our way to commercial break. Yeah, um, he left us now so we could eat his brandy that he got from Christina. <laughs> he deserves I, his treat. He's worked hard. I just wanted to say one thing on a personal experience note about Dan, um, if I may, and the radio station, you know, and I maybe I speak for all of us, I think I do to some degree, but your experience and professionalism brought all of us together in a venue that never would have happened for us. And, you know, it's it brings us all joy. I mean, I love it. I love seeing everybody every week. I clearly love talking. I didn't, I would never, you know, when I was thinking about my first show and my nerves, it was like, Dan, you treat everybody professionally. So you, you have this kind of, okay, everything's going to be okay. But you brought such an incredible experience and journey to us as well. Um, to have this kind of venue in this professional atmosphere. And though we are friendly and have gotten closer over the years in certain ways, it's a joy. I, I, I can't believe that I, I'm currently hosting this radio show yeah. once a week that I'm with, you know, Christina is this incredible producer that Otto is this, I mean, you're every show you, you bring such, such ideas and thoughts and questions, such thoughtfulness to the, to, to the show, uh, every show, every show you say something that is just so your perspective. So I want to just thank you, Dan, because it's been an amazing experience. And I want to say- And will continue to be. Of course it will be. But the thing that, that the special thing about the show too, Christina, when you were talking is that the most important thing for, I think, everybody is education. And I'm not talking going to college, I'm talking about learning um, from people who know stuff. You know, whether it's advice or you've been there, if you don't know or if you don't have access to the, these, this kind of information, um, you're not going to know. So this venue now, you know, starting out as radio, you know, going to Zoom on archived for years and years and years has really offered a lot of information. And I think the excitement when people recognize Christine and I and Otto and and say things to us is there. It's never, oh my God, you're famous. Not that we're famous, but it's like, yeah. I learned so much from that show. When you had the guest about medication management, you know, I'm getting much more organized. It's those are the things that I'm like, excellent, you know, that they get it. And Dan, that's really because of you, of course, Christina and the guests, but I'm just saying you allowed yeah. us to kind of use this venue and get the message out there to to all these people. So thank you. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'd like to just get on the on the Dan Cox mm -hmm. bandwagon also. Mm -hmm. Even though Dan and I like to needle each other a little bit here and there, that's all part of mutual respect. And that's what I have for Dan. He is a pro. 
from top to bottom as far as this is concerned and as far as a human being is concerned as well. So that's it, Dan. I'm not saying any more. Oh, that's it. You got it. That's right. It's, it's <laughs> once a year. All right, but, Christine, you know it's all yours. <laughs> as, I, <laughs> as I sit here, you know, I think what is special about this program and, you know, the radio station is is really the do good component and the community. And I think like, that's just the overall message is like, just to come together. Listen, we're all from different walks of life, all different ages. And, you know, the fact that we come together each week and bring different things um, to the table is really just so incredible. And, and that's my favorite thing when I do run into people and, and when I get these calls and my favorite is like, I feel like I'm on a game show because I'll have a senior on the other line and they'll be like, all right, there was the show I saw on TV and it was this part. And it's, it's, you know, it's like, I'm trying to like guess who, what they're talking about. Like, oh yes. You know, that's it. Um, but it's just so great to know that there, that it is helping people out there and, and, and making a difference. And the fact that we have this platform and, you know, I'll give another shout out to Daniel. Once we went to the zoom platform and to, to put it on TV, you know, Dan edits this show every week to make mm-hmm. it, you know, pretty for TV. Um, and it's to have that now, and it's so easy to send it around because, you know, as, as Dan had mentioned earlier, you know, he sends out, you know, different interviews to people who might need it. And it's so great now to have that because I just can send a YouTube link, you know, around to someone who has a question on it. And it's so helpful for our social workers and our nurses to, to have these things. And, and I just want to mention to everyone, if you ever miss an episode, all, you know, these years are archived on our Project Independence website. On our WCWP YouTube page, you'll see a lot of videos. Um, it's just, uh, it's really, really special. I mean, this is, I always say it, my one of my favorite parts of the job that, you know, it's so nice to do something that, you know, is helping people, but you're still having fun doing it, you know, and not many people can say that. Um, so it's, it's a pleasure with all of you and I'm going to start again. I feel, I feel it welling up. Um, but to be every week with you guys and Beck, shout out to you, you know, because you stepped in during a really tough time for all of us and you did it like a pro. And, uh, of course, Otto, you come in, uh, you know, you, you signed up for, you know, here and there, and then you just got locked in for every single week and we became our own little radio family and. Um, it's just a wonderful thing and it feels good to be able to do good um for everyone and i'm just gonna try to keep it together my gosh guys i was doing so well and then it's just, here i know i have mine behind here i just gonna have to grab them see i don't um, i don't hear as much feedback as you guys do you know so i really don't know i almost feel like i'm talking to you and and that's it uh i because well, i'm say, not you gotta in, know yeah yeah, I'm not in meetings. I don't get three one one calls or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. so I really don't know who's listening. To be blunt about yeah. it, uh, yeah, I'm just well, assuming there the are people is. who is are listening. People, you know, people are in the the, and I really have to say, and even more so sometimes the listening is really the watching of North Hempstead TV because um, I know myself. I prefer if, if I have the option to watch something, I'm always going to choose the video added component to it because you just feel more a part of things um so i just think that is just really really cool and you know also just in preparing for the show i have to give you guys all a shout out because of course we talked about my love of statistics um so beck has hosted the show 128 times she's been a guest 11 times on the show and otto you have co-hosted the show 229 times um so this is your 230th time which is um a lot of shows, Otto. So well, I looked at um, the I'm list that... of people I have talked to, and I'm thinking to myself, "My heavens, you had to learn something, you know, <laughs> talking to all those so, people." It's so funny, because like, I, yeah, it's so many people, you know, and that's I've what been a guest to too, though. You have right. been. You've been a guest yeah, multiple times Evelyn, as well. Rebecca's mother. That's right. Uh, I matter but of fact, it's, um, I, I was on eleven, eleven, eleven. They, yes. I still have that etched as a as a guest. <laughs> yes, you were there. And and I, I, you know, I remember just, it because I played basketball. You were the veteran. It was when we did your and veteran. Number eleven interview. was always my number when I played ball. So the eleven, eleven, eleven was a lucky number. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, looking through all the topics, were just and guests. It's there's people I forgot about that we even 
talk to, you know, but the, I mean, the diversity of topics is really what I wanted to get across. I mean, there's everything from a bunch of different medical topics to mental health, to stress management, to different monthly themes, safety, nutrition, transportation, housing, elder law. We've had comedians, authors, um, different entertainment, you know, realms. Um, we had gardening. You know, we had scams, veterans, technology, you know, and just interesting people were some of my favorite topics too. You know, it was just um, someone would say, you know, I think you really should talk to this. And John would bring a lot of people. Um, and it was just what I loved about this show is, you know, once, which always stuck out to me, he brought on his friend who was talking about he had like one of the largest saltwater fish tanks um, in the area. It was like some like crazy story. And then we were talking just about that. It was supposed to be like a light interview. And then he was also a veteran, you know, and John really didn't know that part of, of his friend's life. And, and his friend opened up to, about it and really talked mm -hmm. about his experience. And, and that's always my favorite thing, too, is, you know, we've had these guests on. You think it's going one way. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, I didn't know this about you. You know, like this is an amazing thing. Otto, I know we've had, you know, some of your friends on the show um, as well. So it's just uh, it's really a special thing to make people and my best part of the job is when a guest walks away and says, oh my God, that like just flew by so fast. You know, I had a great time. And I said, well, you know what? Then I know we're doing something right. Well, I think the big thing to me at least is that this is not like a PowerPoint presentation. And and frankly, uh, a lot of when the guests come on, they, they think in the beginning, they're going to be doing like a PowerPoint presentation, like at an advisory meeting. No. <laughs> it doesn't work like that we go off on different tracks which mm -hmm. we hope are interesting tracks based on uh learning a, a high end level of what this is all about uh, and you know we're not listening to a powerpoint presentation which i in many cases is fine that's what you have to do but to me that's not always the best way to learn about something and your yeah. words about education rebecca are true for me in this program uh, and the people hopefully who are listening. It, education, as you point out, is not just college education, it's life education uh, right. and your willingness to learn along the way. There's, you know, every day you learn, you should learn a lot of new things, no matter how old you are. Uh, no, and I think Otto, that is the perfect slogan for the show is that it is it's never too late to try something you know it's never too late to learn something and, and to educate yourself and you're right this format this thing that you know dan really helped to curate you know to make it this round table discussion and i know myself like you Otto, that's how i learn best right so i could have someone you know give me a whole boom 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 powerpoint thing and i'm not retaining anything but I think, you know, this where we're so fortunate to have so many wonderful speakers and a shout out to all the people that took out time to join us, you know, when we were in studio and now via Zoom um, and hopefully back in the studio soon. But it's it's the knowledge that they have. And we really have, you know, especially when we do these hour interviews, time to really get in depth and, and understand whatever topic it might be. And I think that that's the best way i mean the amount of notes and one day when i have free time i will go through my scribbles um i, I might just publish the scribbles the way they are but every show i sit there and i'm writing you know keywords it might be on the back of a piece of paper on a new paper and my hope is always to kind of compile the little golden nuggets that i did but right now they're just all paper clipped together um but i think that it's just such a valuable thing, you know, and a shout out to Irish Bunshaft who coined the term golden nuggets many, many <laughs> years back um, about the show. And it's something that we really um, take with us because well, she, she goes, every show I do, there's a golden nugget I learn. And I was like, that is really just sums it up very well. I think one of the difficult things about anything like this, all right, is the ability for three people to allow the other two people to talk. All right. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's difficult sometimes for all of us, I'm sure, because you got this stuff on your brain, you want to get it out. And what I love yeah. about what we do is that really we do a pretty good job at giving each other a chance to talk. Like I have, unfortunately, situations where I've been out with friends or whatever, and one friend will do 98% of the talking, and there's really no conversation. It's just, you mm -hmm. know 
talk, 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 talk. It goes on and on. And, you know, uh, I look back on the night and I'll say to my wife, I say, you know, they did like 90 percent of the talking. You know, <laughs> there was no conversation. Uh, and I think we try here hard to have a conversation. And you do have to work at that, admittedly. Right, yeah. I mean, I know myself. I have stuff I want to get tried right. out. You get excited yeah. about it. You want to just like, you got to get, oh, wait, you know, here it comes. I got to say it, you know. Well, like I have the pad here and I try to jot down what, uh, you know, that's why I would not be good on a stand-up television because I would really need to have a place to jot right. this stuff down so that I, I remember I feel it. the same way. You know? I feel the same you know, way. I, I, I wish that we could, you know, get some positive excitement about aging. Like everything about aging is so kind of negative. And, and I do it to myself, you know, because I'm, I'm yeah, hitting I'm a certain it. decade Absolutely. and I'm not happy about it. But you know what? I have my health. I've got a career. I have sons. I've got all this wonderful stuff. And and another day in this life with my kids is is wonderful. It really shouldn't matter, you know. And then like I, you kind of, we're just so used to putting such a negative thing on, you know, aging. Because yeah, See, now I, I'm going to interrupt you because I notice on Facebook, all right, that you are concerned, and you're yes. six months away about getting to the next decade, all right, and my point to you is so right exactly so exactly you know? and, now I, and, and if but, you think about it yeah, aging, but that's the right attitude well yeah. aging is kind of like you know when when i used to be a frequent flyer and go to different hotels and this and that and get four billion points aging is like you're getting more reward points as you go along you know, I like that. I like that. I'm writing those, that one down. I'm liking. I'm writing that one down. No, points, it's reward points. I like what that. What you do with those I'll reward that one. points is up to you. All right. Are you going to use them, or you're just going to let them rot away, or you know, uh, you know, it. I, I can talk from experience. <laughs> you, you know, know Otto. Right? Otto, and I think you're hitting. You know, and and Beck, I totally get it. And listen, I think this this is a common theme, right? And obviously, it affects people of all you know, ages, right? So I remember when my husband turned 40 and we could call him a baby, you know, he loves to be called a baby. I said, I work with seniors, you're a baby, relax. But he was so upset, I remember, you know, and he was like, oh God, you know, I'm 40 and I'm getting, and he was, he was so weighing so much on the number. And I could say, I said, it's just a number, you know? And I, I, I just quote Otto constantly, you know, because I was like, you know, I was like, we talk about this all the time and I'll never forget Otto, you saying you knew people who, you know, when they were 20, were you know acting old you know and it's 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 so important to not get so hung and i think listen it's a society thing we're all we all have it programmed and i get it we could we could say this now but still you know tomorrow feel like oh you know I'm, I'm approaching this you know decade or whatever but i think at the end of the day back you hit the nail on the head it's all about gratitude it's all about you know appreciating each day and making the most of each day um because it is a gift and I think that it's important to, when you start going down a path, to like, you know, just reframe your brain into a, that kind of thinking. Well, I think we end on that yeah. note. So, um, it, what a wonderful show um, having the supervisor on and Paula showing up, and of course, little cupcakes. Having the <laughs> sign off, uh, going to commercial break with Dan, which I guess we'll never see again, but actually it can be we'll next year. So many times, I think I'm gonna clip it and every break just play it for. Um, Otto, thank you so much. You're just, it's so wonderful to have you as a co-host and a friend. And um, Christina, I think we, I can't say enough about everything. Yes. I will be back next week, kicking off year 13. And there we go. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. You're listening to Project Independence in You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Have a great weekend.